Hey folks, welcome back. We are uh, <clears throat> going to do a replay today. I don't have a, I didn't record it live, so unfortunately it's just right here in the replay system, which means the shots are going to look a little janky, but it also allows me to rotate around and show you what's happening in the fight, which I think is going to be helpful for this particular match, because I want to take you through a nice little fur ball that occurred over the rocket site here in the middle. And I also want to tell you, you know, one of the keys to victory is knowing who your opponents are. So if you're not already doing it, the very first thing you should do when you're getting into a match is this. Hit the tab button. You want to be looking at what sites are on the map so you know what's important and what can wait. And you also need to be looking at who's on your team and who's against you. Now, I highly recommend uh, the bots uh, mod uh, to kind of just clear those names out, make it that much easier for you to see, however you want to do that. Uh, and you can pick that up through um, a couple of different places. Uh, NobleQ, I think, has a download on his site uh, for some of this. And then also, if you go to Aslane, um, his mod pack has it as well. And then uh, I believe that mod might be transferred to the Discord. It was on the forums back in the day. Um, so we'll have to look into that, and I'll try to put a link below this video if I get a chance to. But, you know, it just makes it easier to see. It's not required. But here you go. You know, we have a 4v4, uh, which is great. That's a good, a good medium-sized match here. And the first thing you want to do is who's on my team. You know, what are they going to be doing? I've got a P61 and an F2G that are flighted up. I also have an XP72 there, and then my Key 162.1, which I have just purchased. So I've only run a couple of battles in it, but I'm liking it so far for what it is. Um, and uh, so, you know, my guess is here, the XP72 and the F2G are going to work the uh, edges of the map. They're going to try and get in command center, that sort of thing. The P61, it depends. He's specialized, so he's had it for a while. He's a good P61 player. Every time I look up, he should be somewhere else on the map, right? Um, he's got the ability to be in lots of different places, take care of bombers or whatever else is happening, <coughs> flip zones or defend them as needed, and really just be a terror all over, all over the map. So my, I, on the other hand, have a Tier 9 Japanese light fighter, and the... You know, the Japanese line is very consistent. It doesn't change from low to high, uh, which is a little bit different than, for example, the American line, which turns into a little more of that turn and burn aspect the higher in the tiers it gets. Um, this one is consistently turn and burn. You know, my speed is not awesome for a Tier 9 jet fighter, but my maneuverability is quite good. And the guns are, are pretty good as well, as long as you can get them to line up. It's a pair of 30 millimeters. So <coughs> I'm going to be the turn fighter in this scenario, obviously, and I'm going to lock down the rocket site in the middle because that's what I'm going to be best at. At least that's going to be my initial strategy, my initial thought. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is look and see what's on the other team. So they have three U.S. multi-role, or three multi-roles, two of them U.S., because, of course, this was the Battle of Coral Sea weekend, and, uh, and then a P-80 and a 109 TL also flighted up. So I'm looking at that list. <coughs> F94D, I can outturn that. F2G, I can outturn that. P80A, that's a question mark, depending on how he has it built. It may be pretty close to mine in terms of turn. I think I can still outturn him, though, even then. Um, or the 109TL, which is a German royalty roll. I can definitely outturn that one. <coughs> so I know right now I have a couple of different options for how I can approach this, but mostly that center zone if it turns into a fur ball, is going to belong to me. And I don't know how good the pilots are. That's the other question. That's something I have to figure out during the match. But the F-94 and the 109 are both specialized, so we can assume they at least know something about playing their aircraft and, and how to do them. Um, and the 194, I know, is going to be much faster than me, so I'm not going to try and chase him down. And that's the first part of, of knowing, you know, the difference between winning and losing is knowing what you're going to do in a particular match. If you're supposed to chase, if you're supposed to turn fight, you know, how you want to do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the match, and we're going to watch one unfolds. But that's my initial prediction, and as you're going to see, it doesn't always survive uh, contact with reality, but that's where we're going to begin at. I'm going to get some altitude and pro tip. I'm going to let the uh, multi-roll, the Seahawk, be the first one into the zone so he catches the AI AA that's going to get flown up in the air. So he's got to worry about dodging that and not me. Um, and first thing that goes funky on me, I'm going to get a beat on the heavy fighter and realize, my word, the F-94 has just done everything possible to get to the middle zone as quickly as possible. And he's using his rockets on an AA site. So I immediately revise my estimate of this F-94. Even though it's specialized, he does not know how to use his aircraft in the right fashion. Those rockets in the F-94 are air-to-air -air rockets. Uh, they're cluster fire. They don't do much damage. There's no way they're doing anything to a ground target.
it's just not helpful. And beyond that, you know, we're in a weekend where air to air is the big deal for the F 94D, right? This is Battle of Coral Sea. You want air credits in this thing, you want uh, air points in this thing. So to fire off the rockets on the ground part, I'm like, okay, so let's, let's change that estimate. And immediately, I also notice, you know, I've got a P 80 back here. But I'm also up tiered from him. And I'm not quite as worried about it. Um, part of my question mark at this point is, okay, well, what am I facing, right? Um, maybe these pilots aren't as good as I would like to give them credit for right off the bat. So we're going to have a little fun with this and see if we can bait the P-80 into getting into a dogfight with us uh, while we try to go ahead and finish off this F-94 because I do not want to be in a 2v1 no matter how good or bad the pilots might be. So I call for the Seahawk to assist me. I dive on the F-94. He pulls up. I pull out of the way just to avoid getting a new collision with him. I'm not worried about the rockets because I know he's already fired them off. And uh, he's turning up. Meanwhile, P-80 is still coming in. So this is about to turn into a 2v1, and I know I need to go to my specialty as a Japanese light fighter, which is I need to start turning and burning immediately. Um, I'm going to flip up and over the ascent of this P-80 and make him change direction. So basically from his point of view, I move to the right, so he's got to move his nose to the right. And I'm going to go back to the left to make him move his nose to the left, and that's going to throw off his aim. He's also diving on me at max speed, which means he's going to have a very short window to get guns on me, and I have full health at 380. This is a little beefier than other Japanese light fighters, so no problem there. And I'm going to continue kind of this vertical fight with the F-94 because it's a short matter of time before I'm on his tail. So over the F-80, no problem there. He doesn't even get a single hit on me, and I'm already on the tail of the F-94. Now, he's kicked in his pneumatic assist at this point, so he's keeping up a little bit with my turn, but that's not going to last long. And as long as he continues to turn, I'm going to turn with him. Now, I realize the F-90, uh, the P-80 is still turning. This guy's going up. He's bleeding all of his speed. He's been coming up, right? You saw what happened, so he's going to be nice and slow. And I'm still not convinced from what I've seen in the first pass that I need to be too worried about the P-80. So we're going to go ahead and finish our original battle, especially with these guns, as good as they are. I can get him down pretty quickly. And the P-80 is guns on. I'm starting to lose a little bit of health, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off in a, in a bit of preservation here. And again, I'm just going to take this a very sharp turn that he can't keep up with. And I'm going to take him back and forth, just to see if he can keep up. I'm also going to cross up the F-94 uh, to keep him from getting a good guns on. I'm going to be weaving under him. And now we have a nice uh, 2v2 if you count the Seahawk. I'm not sure I do, but <laughs> it's there nonetheless. And I'm just going to keep uh, trying to maneuver these guys. Uh, and again, I, I outturn both of them. So as long as I keep maneuvering, I should be fine. Um, especially given what I've seen so far. So we're going to cross up the F-94 this time. And you see the P-80 diving. We're going to pull sideways to lengthen that. And then um, I've reversed the F-94 at this point. So I'm going to be on his tail and hopefully be able to finish him off. And the P-80 has got to turn into me, and then he's going to have to turn back out. We've already dissected, right? He's going to turn left to get to me, but I'm already going to be going directly ahead of me as the camera faces, uh, which is going to be a right-hand turn for him. So I know I've bought myself a little bit of time uh, with how this has turned out. So we're going to get on the F-94, but as it turns out, I don't need to because the Seahawk already has him dead to rights. And uh, I'm going to instead turn off and finish off the F-2G here, which uh, was apparently trying to um, tail gun me or get on the rear of the IL-40 which at low HP is in a lower tier plane. That's, that's tough. That's tough to do. So as I said, the uh, Seahawk is going to finish him. If he hadn't finished him, I would have just done a little lag roll and popped in behind him. And the P-80 has just come out of his turn. You can look on the mini-map there. You can see he's just now turning uh, to face me. Up above is the heavy fighter. Down below is him. He's just now getting on my six. So time for he and I to dogfight. The odds are better unless that uh, uh, arrow comes down, but I don't think he's going to um, unless this guy calls for help. But right now, it may just be a one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm going to do what Japanese turn fighters do. I'm going to turn on a dime. I'm going to force him to turn on a dime. And then I'm going to see how good he is because I'm going to put him into the vertical. And this is the second thing about knowing this game and winning, and that is you have to be able to fight in three dimensions. And we've talked about this a lot before, but I can't, can't overstress the importance. This is just a vertical loop. Will he follow me? Can he follow me? He's trying to. All right, now I'm going to put him into a scissors. I'm going to keep the vertical loop, but it's going to be a halfway. And then I'm going to go up again. And 
the halfway, and he's seen shooting, but he's not quite turning in. And the Seahawk is snipping off some portions of him. I'm gonna let him catch up a little bit. I know at this point I for sure outturn him. I'm just bleeding his speed so that I can bring my nose around on his tail. And when I see him getting low enough, I'm gonna go straight vertical like this. And nope, he still followed me. All right, we'll go one more loop. But you can tell he's almost out of energy. He's slowing down so much. Unfortunately, the F-94 is coming back in, so is the F-2G. But you can see the F-94 is again throwing rockets at an AA site down below. Um, extreme prejudice against AA sites. Now, if he wasn't specialized, I, could, I understood that. Because AA guns, I think, is usually a secondary for specializing. He's already got it specialized. So I figure I've got time to deal with uh, the P-80 here before he comes knocking on my door. So I'm going to keep this loop going. And you can see he's already coming up. That's fine, he is boosting up at an alarming rate. I can't tell which one of us he's going for, but I'm just about on the tail of the P-80, so I just have to dodge this initial attack run. And by turning, I have continued to do that. He ended up uh, going for the Seahawk. Target priority is my third lesson for today in terms of dealing with enemies. And this is part of why I recommend that bot mod. I should have been his target, right? Now, pretty good chance I would have dodged that, uh, forced him to miss, given again, I started over there to his left and came to his right forcing him to wiggle, um, but nonetheless, I should have been his primary target. But at this point, I'm now on the tail of the FP-80. I have reversed him. He's going to overshoot me rapidly, and it's going to take him 14 seconds to finish his turn to get on me, and by then, I'll already be turning on him because this guy's going to be dead uh, because these 30 millimeters do do some work, especially at short range. He's gone, right? So what's next? I got him climbing away. I'm going to go up after him and see what I can do. Or I can come down here to the F2G. And at that point, I do realize the F2G is climbing for me. So uh, I'm going to try and deal with him. Again, I'm going to turn, turn into him. It takes a little bit off of me. I didn't quite, quite angle that right. Um, but I can easily outturn this F2G. He has also pulled his pneumatic assist. But the F94 is still moving in a different direction, so I'm not too worried about him. So I guess it's just me and this guy. And then I realize I've got some help, actually. The XP72 is coming in. And he's going to take a chunk out of him. And this guy is now on the defensive. He's just turning to save his own skin at this point, right? And I'm very excited because that means I got him. I've got him. I'm going to be on the deck, but I'll, I'll get that back. I'm just going to crack this guy down, and that'll be that. Unfortunately, there's something I didn't count on here, which is that somehow in the midst of this turn battle and trying to, to rake this F2G out of existence, uh, which I basically almost get to right here, um, somehow the uh, Messerschmitt M239, whether the AI is smart enough to shoot at me or shooting at the XP72, I, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to die to the flipping 329. <laughs> of all the things that were going on in this match, it's the one I did not count on. Uh, our P61 saw it and was trying to come to my aid, God bless him, but uh, it wasn't, wasn't enough, right? And now the P-80 is back, and uh, the P-61 is going to put on a clinic. Finish off the F-2G, uh, get some turns on this guy. Uh, unfortunately, he's also now trapped in the tail gunner of the 329, and so that's not going to last very long. But he's going to do the very smart thing. So look at the mini-map. I'm going to zoom it out for you. You see our heavy in the center there, and you see him rocking and rolling. He's bleeding. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. And get there, get there, get there. Yes, so he has crossed the line outside the zone. He was smart enough to es extend and escape, knowing he was going to die so that he did not die in the zone. And that is lesson number four for today. Uh, get out the zone to die if you can. Uh, because he does that, watch what happens next. Now he's dead. We didn't cost us the points. And our bot bombers and the aircraft were able to seal up this sector as a result. At the same time, the uh, F2G, his flight mate, has captured this and is now working on this. You can see him, I think, there in the background. Um, and then uh, they've captured this one. We've captured that one. So we're up three to one at this point, which is fantastic because uh, I know this one's getting counter capped and I know this one just got locked down. So we are in a good position, a good strength position for the beginning of this match. And I'm going to go back to my regular strategy, which is just keeping this thing locked down, especially knowing what I'm dealing with. I feel confident I can handle the P-80, and the P-80 was the biggest question mark to begin with coming into this match. So uh, I can see him coming in, but in a sense, I'm just, again, I'm kind of baiting him onto my tail. Uh, I want to see if I can handle this. I'm going to spin out of the loop, 
let him come on to me, and then I'm just going to, again, just take him up vertically. It worked last time. It's going to work again. I chew off a little more of the uh, P228 while I'm waiting on him to get lined up. Cross him up, cross him up, come down. I want to start this vertical by going down because that gives me a little extra speed. Um, this is the 109 TL decides to make a pass, but again, I'm wiggling so much, there's nothing he can do about it. And uh, he's actually going to go up. I didn't realize this the time I was fighting this guy, but he's actually trying to turn as well. It's just He just can't turn with me. I don't think he's set up for it. And so instead, he ends up going down to the tail guns on the R329. But same thing here. I'm just going to bring this guy up in the vertical. And there's nothing he can do about it. He's already lost this fight. He just doesn't realize it. Um, he probably should have burned away from me. Uh, that would have been the smarter thing to do. But, you know, he's going to die right here uh, in the middle of all this. And, uh, yeah, it's not even going to be me. It's going to be the LA-9 that finishes him off because <laughs> I was still bringing him up. Uh, the F-94 is right here, though, and so I feel confident that um, it's time to take him out again. And he has learned, so props to the Overman uh, for getting something special out of this match, and that is learning not to turn fight me. Right? The P-80 didn't learn that. This guy did. He clicks the afterburner, and he's gone. Um, good for him. That's exactly the right move to take. He is way faster than I am, especially specialized with the gear he probably has on there, and I've got to turn off. So... Instead, I'm going to go for a nice fat 109 TL, and this dang bop LA-9 is already there. He's doing some work, let me tell you. So uh, we'll finish off the TL. The LA-9 steals the kill for me again. And uh, while doing that, another lesson learned. He got out to 1,100, 1,200 something meters and turned around and came back, which I was not expecting. Um, and so I got caught napping that time. Always be watching your mini-map, right? It is the death of so many people to not do that. Um, fortunately for us, that LA-9, which is apparently um, you know, controlled by uh, some sort of ace bot pilot, gets another kill, uh, taking him down as well. And you see our F2G wandering around there. We've got four of the zones. So at this point, I'm not going to go back to the middle. I'm going to play defensive. Uh, I see the ground pounder over here. Um, I see the air flight incoming. I want to get back the points from this. I'm assuming most of the ground stuff is gone anyway. I can hang on to this zone while our bots are working on, or the P61 or someone is working on capturing that zone. It looks like the P61's over there. And this is what I love about the maneuverability of Japanese fighters. So I've made this pass. I've chewed off you know, half his health or whatever. Watch this up and over that I do. This plane is custom built for this. Just standing still, dipping over, and then finishing him off. And uh, there's not many planes in this game that have that level of maneuverability. And uh, that doesn't change at Tier 9 and Tier 10 for these Japanese jets. They are still just turn and burn experts. And um, I'm looking forward to playing the Tier 10 some. Um, I've already made a lot of XP on this and the MiG, uh, both at Tier 9, having a, a good time playing at Tier 9. And I want to see see how the 10 performs. with uh, The guns are going to be interesting at Tier 10 instead of Tier 9. They're not going to be quite as good. But you get a little more durability and a little more speed. And I'll take those. So I'm trying to save that zone. We get the air superiority. Not for long, though, because I wasn't able to save it. You know, I couldn't hang up there with the bombers. It's not a good idea for this plane. Uh, but we are eight seconds from squall line. And I'm diving into this because that F2G is low. And I can do this again. Um, Overman has again dropped rockets here. These are air rockets, my dude. Uh, fire them at me, not at, not at the AA guns. So uh, he put him, allowed me to get on a six just right there. Uh, we converged, and that's going to be that. Um, if you're watching the minimap, I'm definitely watching the minimap at this point. You see we've got the other two players coming in here, and RP-61 behind them, or diving on them as well. No, excuse me, in front of them. Uh, they're coming up behind us. Uh, but I feel pretty good. I have four seconds of boost. Um, I'm at 578. I'm also a tier up from these guys. Not particularly worried about it. Um, I get the overman, I spin out because I'm worried about the guys behind us, even though the P-61 is still climbing. I don't know if he's trusting his turret or just didn't see them yet. But I'm going to take a pass at the P-80. I get it as pilot, so that's going to maybe save the P-61. Uh, <laughs> the 109 TL goes down to our 109 TL, which has also decided to join the fight. I love this furball, man. This was what was so great about 1.X is the furballs like this and what made this such a fun match. 
Uh, and I'm just going to climb up after him because I know he's burned his boost to get to the middle as fast as possible again. Um, and so as a result of that, I can boost up, stick within 600 meters, which is my cannon's range. He's moving very slowly, which makes him an easy target. And I think I also had a little bit of help from maybe the XP-72 down there. Somebody else was shooting. I don't know if they were doing any damage or not, but uh, we got him. And I can just wheel over, right over uh, stall speed and dip down. And all of us are here in the match uh, on our side, and which is awesome. Um, we got four of the zones. You know, all but one of them are out. And this is pretty much over. <coughs> I'm going to dive on the TU-10. But I decide uh, to let the F2G and the P61 have that one. I'm going to die on the F2G, dive on the F2G, the last player in the match who has continued to try and work this middle, which you know, I don't think is a smart idea for the F2G in this sense. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons I say work the edges with your with your multi rolls. Uh, don't put yourself in a bad position. Look at that. That's the in incredible turn again. And I don't have any turn gear on this, by the way. I'm not running pneumatic, I'm running coolant to keep the engine fires down because this thing does catch on a fire a good bit. And I'm running uh, polished skin and the um, uprated engine, which also <laughs> contributes to the fires, so hence that and the fire extinguisher. I, am, I did commit to one piece of upgraded equipment on this at Tier 9, even though I don't normally do it with Tech Tree aircraft, and that was a G-suit. Um, I did that because um, not so much that I needed you know, high-speed stuff, but that allowed me, for the cost of one token, to get the better auto aim on these guns, right? That, that sub skill on the G suit of accuracy at moving targets spreads that auto aim angle. Um, and it seems to have helped a good bit on this. I do not have Marksman 2 on this pilot yet, um, and that really helped. And I thought it was worth the one token to be able to burn enemies down a little faster because these guns can be squirrely. Um, I'm going after the LA-9, but as you can see, that's the end of the match. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one today. Uh, the furball was just a lot of fun to play in. Um, this particular plane, the, the Key 162, has been interesting to fly. Um, you know, it was a salamander, I think, the Hinkle 162 in, in Germany. Um, and I don't know that it was designed as a turn fighter. I think that's a fun slot for it in this game, though. And, and I've enjoyed it. It does have its limitations, obviously, with speed. Um, and although it's a little beefier, it's still not, you know, doesn't have great durability. But it's been fun to fly, and it's been fun to, to do some of those um, turns that you can, maybe because of the double rudder set up on the tail. You get a little bit of uh, better yaw maneuverability and, and uh, wiggle than other planes do. But it's been a lot of fun. Can't wait to try out the Tier 10 of this or the MiG as well. I'll be grinding both of those in the coming weeks, uh, especially as the coming storm comes up, the Tempest Marathon. Excited to see what happens there as well. And uh, we'll see if maybe we convince Corvax to come back on and uh, fly the Tempest in a match or two and show us what it's all about. So I hope you enjoyed this one today. I hope these uh, tips were helpful to you. Again, first thing you get in that match, what you're going to do, hit the tab key, figure out who's on the enemy team, what they're flying, how you can beat them, or if you can beat them, and plan accordingly. So that's it for today. Have a great week. I will have some videos out for you later this week. And I uh, hope you are enjoying your matches, and I hope I get to see you in the skies. Good luck and good hunting.